Today I'm joined by Ryan Lonergan. Ryan, how are you doing? I'm doing very, very well. Uh, well, thank you for joining me. Excited to talk with you. Uh, we're going to talk on a lot of different things. Uh, where we'll speak uh, to your coaching experience, uh, but a lot of how you lead your family, how you lead others in the community, and how you lead yourself. And so, like I said, coaching, uh, I do want to touch on your playing days as well. So let's go ahead and start there. What did your playing days entail? Um, you know, I've, I've been a sports enthusiast my whole life. So I've played a little bit of everything starting, you know, in a small town I grew up in in Iola, Kansas. Um, I believe first grade soccer and basketball is where those playing days began. We didn't, uh, we didn't have other sports available. I guess we had baseball. I never was too strong of a baseball player, but played a little <laughs> bit. Um, but uh, we didn't start football, which was my main sport, and track and field also I did in college uh, until seventh grade. So I would say my real first experience in the sports that I have coached now and that I'm a big part of, I started in seventh grade and I was really successful. My dad happened to be my coach in football and in track, and I think that had a pretty big influence. Um, and I was really successful in both sports all the way through high school. Um, I got scholarship offers to do football, you know, almost every state school in Kansas, except for KU and K-State. Mm. Um, junior colleges, Division IIs, NIAs, I, I had nice. all those offers. Um, yeah. And I chose to go to Fort Scott Community College based off of the desire to, you know, eventually make it to play Division I football. Um, after a year and a half at Fort Scott, and really it was a personal success. We didn't have a lot of team success, but um, I was offered some scholarships to division one schools and ultimately chose the university of North Texas. Um, I went there for a spring and found out it wasn't the fit that I had hoped that it would be. So I transferred back to a place where I had offers out of high school um, and out of junior college to Pittsburgh state where I knew they had a really strong tradition of football and, uh, when I got there, they asked if I would also want to do track, um, mm -hmm. shot put and discus throw in high school and had a lot of success. So I did two sports for, for three years at Pitt state. And, uh, we had a lot of, a lot of successful seasons playing football, um, met a lot of great people and, you know, it was a really, really a fun time and a good time of growth in my life. And, uh, really became who I am today, largely, you know, due to the time that I spent at Pitt State. I mean, made a lot of contacts that, you know, kind of helped me throughout my coaching career while, while I was there. Yeah, very nice. Sounds like a full athletic career. Uh, what sticks out to you as a favorite on the field memory you have from your collegiate years? Um, I think my favorite memory was my uh, senior year in 2001 at Pittsburgh State. We played a, a Thursday night conference championship game. It, it wasn't a conference championship game. It just happened to be that the last game of the year was the top two teams um, in the conference. And mm. we won a big game that was televised and, you know, had a lot of success in that game. And just the feeling of being on the field with all your buddies after the game, after accomplishing, you know, a big feat was was a whole lot of fun and I, I look back at that fondly and you know just being around those guys that you'd put in so much work with and so much time with that I'll never forget that and you know if I ever want to go back and watch film that's the game I you know go back to and look at just because it brings back so many of those you know strong feelings and, and feelings of satisfaction with with all the time and effort that was put into things to kind of have it culminate that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So was that like of the league title then? Yeah, we won the um, Mid-America Intercollegiate Activities Association ah. 2001 <laughs> championship, right? I yeah. mean, we, we played two more games. We won a playoff game that year in the NCAA Division II playoffs, and then we lost in the next round. I believe it was the quarterfinals to the eventual national champion. Mm. And we, it wasn't close. It was ugly. Oh man, <laughs> my, my last game was maybe my least favorite for, for oh, many reasons. <laughs> we got pounded pretty bad. Yeah, oh my goodness. 
Well, you did mention your dad also coached you for some time. What's a favorite memory you had with your dad as a coach? Uh, what did you enjoy most about having him as a coach? Um, you know, he, my dad was the head coach my my sophomore year. Um, and then he, after that, he resigned from being the head coach just to be an assistant. I think that, you know, it was just time. He was ready to slow down a little bit and maybe enjoy it a little bit more and not feel all the stresses and I, I really think that there were a couple of car ride homes after games with my dad. I didn't have a car till the very end of my senior year, but a couple of car rides homes where my dad just, you know, told me how proud he was of me. Mm. I remember that over everything else. Um, yeah. I don't know. It, it, that was yeah pretty cool because I worked hard for that for a long yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing what the words of a father does for a kid. And then obviously you remember it now as an adult, total change of trajectory, I'm sure. So yeah. we had a exciting. couple of really, really fun games in high school too. Uh, my junior year, we won a game on a field goal, like a long field goal with no <laughs> time left. And then my senior, my senior year on homecoming, really memorable game. Um, we were playing a really good, I think they were ranked number two or three in the state. It was 0-0 at the very end of the game, and we had attempted a field goal with hardly any time left, and we missed it. So they got the ball at like the four-yard line, and we're just going to take a knee, and their quarterback tried to do something tricky and got hit and fumbled, and we recovered it in the end zone with no time left. Game over. We won. Yeah. Oh, my God. Crazy. Goodness. Like, crazy. Like, everybody had pretty much just said, well, we're going to go to overtime, and their quarterback right. tried, you know, faking a knee and took off running and got hit and fumbled. And Game was over. So wow. Fun, fun memories, things that, you know, well, they just happen over the course of a yeah. games and they're fun, but I'll never forget those things. Right. Yeah. That is crazy. I'm sure that quarterback did not feel good about that. <laughs> yeah. I think they went on to, you know, maybe finish third in state or something. They were a good team, but yeah. We played well. Yeah. And then as you transitioned out of your playing days, how has your coaching career developed over the years? You know, uh, I was really fortunate. I had one year in college. I had transferred from North Texas to Pitt State where I was ineligible um, just due to transfer mm -hmm. rules. So I actually drove from Pittsburgh, Kansas to Iola, Kansas, you know, about 80 miles every day to coach at Iola for that one year because they needed a coach and you know it was a good experience experience for me I learned a lot that helped me playing then I went back and played you know my final two years um, and then I was so lucky I got into a great program to student teach mm -hmm. uh, a student taught for Gene Weir at Olathe North um, and they were in the midst of winning two straight two straight state championships the the third year in front of that they lost but were maybe the second best team in state and they won it the three years before that. So I got to go on to a staff that, you know, a bunch of outstanding coaches and a bunch of really good kids. My first year ever coaching, you know, postgraduate, we won a state championship and the whole program was 38 and Oh, that season. You know, so it was set the bar high, but it was a lot of fun and kind of to, to see the expectations and how hard the kids work at a championship yeah. program. And, um, you know, it, it was great. Plus all the connections that I've made, I've, I've held onto those connections, you know, the next 18 years now that I've been coaching the same guys that I coached with that first year, guys that I'm still connected with and, you know, turn to when I need help or, um, you know, have questions or to throw ideas around. And, uh, you know, Tim Callahan here is the head football coach at West. He was a coach on that staff, and I've been with him ever since. So it, it was a really, really good experience. And then from that student teaching experience, I, I got a job in uh, Shawnee Mission. And about a week later, Tim got hired here at West. So it was a natural fit for me to just join his staff here at West. And we had a whole bunch of success for a long period of time, which landed me a head coaching job for four years. Um, I was over at Shawnee Mission South, and, you know, I learned a lot. That was a great learning experience, but it was time for a change after four years. And uh, I came back here to West, 
I, I was looking for a place where I could be comfortable because we'd gone from zero to four kids in about seven years. Um, so comfort was something that was important. And I've been back here at West for six years now and back working with Tim and just working a lot harder. This community's changed quite a bit. Um, so it's, it really was a different place, but it was a, a lot of the same people that I was able to work with. And it's been a good experience. Yeah. Awesome. And we'll definitely touch a little bit more on your coaching. And I know you just mentioned you have four kids. What's the family life look like? How long have you been married? How old are the kids currently? What are they into that sort of thing? Um, I've been married for 15 years, <laughs> I guess, 15 and a half years, a little more than 15 and a half years. Um, and we've had five children. Um, my wife and I, unfortunately, we lost our first little girl. She was born and um, had you know, some defects when she was born. So she only lived about two days, which, you know, for me was a great faith check, faith yeah. builder. Yeah. Um, that and playing college football are two of the things that have probably made me who I am more than anything else. Mm. Um, but uh, her name was Avery. She was born in uh, 2006, April of 2006. Um, about 16 months later, we had another little girl named Hannah, who is now, you know, 13 and a half and going to be a freshman in high school next year, which seems not possible. She was baby Hannah forever. <laughs> and I mean, she was special to everybody, you know, after having happened what did to Avery, she was so special to everybody. Um, and she's a great kid. And we probably don't deserve to have a kid as good as her, but She's a really good, good girl and has been super, super easy to parent. Then we have a, a girl, a daughter, Quinn, who was born in 2010. She actually, her birthday is a little less than two weeks or no, a little more than two weeks away from now. She'll be turning 11. Quinn's been a little bit more difficult than Hannah. <laughs> she forced us to, to learn a little bit and to struggle through, through some things, but deep down, she's got a big, big heart and is a great kid and super friendly to, to everyone that she comes across. She's just got a little ornery streak. I mean, <laughs> it, it comes naturally from, from her father and her mother. Um, then uh, we had another little girl. So four girls to start. To no, start with parenthood. Um, and her name's Cora today is actually her eighth birthday. Let's go. We call her Cinca de Coco. <laughs> um, and she is, she is something else. She's about as sassy and type A personality as go getter and is ultra talented as an athlete mm. you know, and, uh, you know, just a good kid and is, yeah she's she's got some special things about her that you know that make her different from her from her sisters yeah um and then about two and a half years after cora brooks we had a, we finally had a little boy shooting, batting 200 percent right not making, <laughs> not making the hall of fame with that but um brooks is five and he'll be in kindergarten next year and he's just starting to get into sports and kind of starting to figure out what he is and who he is and you know, he's gets super into, to whatever he's into. It's been toy story. It's been, uh, right now it's kind of star Wars. He's into things. I'm secretly, I'm hoping that sports, you know, come around for him sooner rather than later. But right now he just wants to play with toys and be a kid. And I support that. Yeah. 100%. Uh, my, my wife, Lord knows I couldn't do it without her. Mm. Uh, her name's Katie. Uh, she, uh, I guess as the sport people would say, I way out kicked my coverage. <laughs> we'll see us walking hand in hand and wonder if she's blind, <laughs> but, uh, she is a, uh, marketing specialist for a real estate team and is, is super, super talented at what she does and has a great personality. And, you know, just, she's a, a great person, a great partner. And, um, we really, we really work well together. Um, and what we put our mind to, we're, we're, we're pretty successful at achieving things that are important to us. And yeah, 
uh, we've been a pretty good team. Love it. It's awesome to hear. Sounds like a full family thriving unit, which is always good to hear. I know family or life in general is not an easy thing. So with that in mind, uh, what would be one marriage advice that you would give? If you could boil it down to one most important thing, what would it be? You know, I, I think that, um, boy, it's, I know kind of where I'm going with this, but, you know, marriage isn't easy. It's not, no, you're not always going to see eye to eye. But if you always do what you think is best for the marriage, not necessarily yourself, it, it tends to have a good outcome and you can feel good about, you know, the things that you do. Yeah. We've had a lot of tough decisions in our marriage and haven't always been, you know, on the same page with everything, but ultimately we know that we care about each other and love each other and are willing to make sacrifices for each other. And we've made our marriage very strong through very difficult things because of that. So we always keep that in mind and refer back to that, that, Hey, we've been through these things together yeah. and something simple is not going to knock us off our, you know, right. right. That's awesome. And uh, I know you mentioned Avery a little bit, and obviously you said you had learned a lot in that season. And uh, I know we share the same faith and I know uh, we can both cling to the fact that the Lord made her uh, before she was in her mother's womb. And it's just crazy that he's so intricate. He's so masterful and he uses the good and bad things of life for our good and for his glory. Uh, what did you learn throughout that time? Um, <laughs> probably better. Mm. <laughs> what, what didn't I learn? You know, um, it, it, it totally changed my wife and I forever you know our priorities were more on you know having fun and being young and you only live once and doing these things and uh it, it hyper focused us super focused us on you know doing the right things and having faith and you know back backing up your beliefs with your actions um and we also learned a lot about you know our family and our friends um, and how, you know, through them, we were able to, to do things and, and it come to find out it was our family and friends, most, largely, you know, friends through faith that, that were there to support us. And, you know, God, God provided for us through that time. Um, there wasn't anything we couldn't handle because we always had something, always had God to, to fall back on and, you know, uh, praying through that time, I think that was a time where God took, um, you know, pain away and, and allowed us to be free and speaking to him. And, and uh, um, I, I, there are just, there's so much yeah. that, you know, through that time that, I, that we learned that, you know, we don't have to go through things by ourselves that, you know, we're going to be supported and we're going to be able to make it. And, um, just that there's, there's also great benefits, you know, for Avery, she has a place to go where she's going to be taken care of and, and, uh, you know, a place where we'll get to meet her again. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. All of those things played such a huge role in, in, uh, that experience. And yeah. And not only did it affect us, but so many people around us, you know, yeah. were able to to come closer to God through that experience and yeah. you know, our witness. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is a lot for sure. And as you were talking, kind of just about the things you had learned, uh, I heard, you know, more or less the word trust, trust in God. And I'm reminded of Isaiah that says, "Those who trust in the Lord." Uh, will soar on wings like like eagles and uh if we trust in him we can run and not grow weary uh, but this life has so much to make us be wary so apart from him i don't see how people do it but that is awesome that your faith was strengthened it took you through that time and is still taking you through life in ways that you cannot be worn down like you said um, yeah and it's it's been amazing how many times you know our experiences now have helped us help other people yeah. Yeah. So good. Well, uh, 
before we transition into some coaching stuff, uh, if your family's not at a field playing athletics and you guys aren't working, what's maybe a good family activity you guys like to do? Well, uh, we are, uh, and I, I say we, meaning me too, we love to go to Disney World. Yeah. Um, we've been four times in the last three years and our kids nice. absolutely love it. And you would think taking four young kids, you know, to a hectic and crazy place would be stressful, but it's our happy place. Um, we love to do that. Um, what else do we do? We do a lot of sports activities, um, obviously. Jeez. Uh, we, we like to travel too. Um, we are a beach family as well as Disney. We have a place that we go to in Michigan. It's been in my family for you know, about 70 years and nice. we go to Gulf Shores occasionally and some other places, just be together and be active and be outdoors and have fun. Um, I wish we could do it more, but our busy, busy schedules kind of make that difficult. Right, right. And Those we, are some good go-tos. That's exciting. <laughs> we, we we're fortunate. We've we've got lots of fun places to go where we can all you know be happy and and uh, you know be with each other. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And I'll ask you the same question, but geared towards coaching. If you can give advice to other coaches, what one piece would you share? About you know about how to connect or keep your family important in in. in um, more so, sorry, uh, to shift a little bit, more so like when you're trying to impact your team, you're in the team environment, team culture, uh, what what has typically worked well for you that you think other coaches could apply and be of use for them? I, I 100% believe that, you know, relationships have to take place before anything else. Um, the most successful I've ever been as a coach or with the kids that I'm invested in and I put time in and I put my efforts into building a relationship and building trust with them and letting them know that, Hey, I'm, I'm in this with you and I care about you. Um, let's, let's work together and let's make this happen. And when that's happened, we've had success on the field, created lifelong, you know, relationships with those kids. Um, and it doesn't get any better than that. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And uh, what have maybe been some like practical ways you've been able to reach your athletes? So maybe that's through activities you guys do at the field. Maybe that's through outside activities. Uh, but what have you seen be successful in, as far as like engaging the heart of the kids you're coaching? You know what? Uh, kids want to work hard. They want somebody that's going to lead them and make them do the right things. And I, I think that a lot of that is that kids need direction. Oftentimes, I think coaches try to be too much a friend and, you know, that's fine. You, you can be a friend, but they also need to understand that you're their leader and that you, they follow your lead and you are going to hold them accountable to working hard and pushing them, you know, to reach their best. Um, and, and when kids do that, you know, they appreciate that a lot and that draws them in even closer to you. And it's good to, you know, have a good positive friendship type relationship with those kids when they respond to the, the motivation to, to get them to work hard and that yeah. they put in the effort. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'm a young coach in my early years of coaching and that definitely hits well. I appreciate those words. Thank you. Um, what would you say if you could boil it down into what you strive to body? Maybe it's a character quality or some sort of value. What do you strive to embody for your athletes in one word? Um, you know, I, I want them to do everything with a purpose. Hmm. You know, why am I doing this? What, are you, what am I doing this for? Same, same thing. When they have a purpose and a goal, and a reason for why they do things, they'll stay on track much better. They'll work harder. You know, I, I don't know if goal setting's kind of that purpose. You know, once you get that purpose, you can set those goals up, you know, those steps or those runs on the ladder to get there. You know, but, but having a purpose goes so far. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
have you ever yourself as a coach identified, hey, this is my purpose for coaching. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Or maybe off the cuff, what comes to mind when you hear those questions? Yeah, I, I've, I have a purpose statement. Um, I, I don't know if I can say it word for word. Yeah. But, uh, my purpose is to create confident um, young people who are going to be positive, productive, you know, citizens in our community and do good things and represent themselves well. And I want them to learn those skills through, you know, whether it be in a classroom or on a field through, you know, those methods. Yeah, absolutely. That's my purpose. I want them to, to learn how to be good people you know, and to, to accomplish things for themselves and for the, the betterment of others. Yeah. Yeah. I love I, it. I could have pulled, I have it written down and on a document. <laughs> oh yeah. It's good to have clarity on why we're doing what we're doing. I agree with you there. Um, just generally speaking, you know, not necessarily related to coaching, but if someone who's close to you could pay you a compliment, what would be the greatest thing you could hear? What would it be? probably they could tell I loved them hmm. yeah love that how would you say you strive to love your wife <laughs> <laughs> oh boy you know um probably the best thing I can do and I, I guess that's kind of sideways thinking but to to love her and let her know that she's loved um whether it be, she's not a big present person. She's more an actions person and she wants to feel supported, you know, and that she knows she always has somebody that's going to back her up and be there. Um, somebody that's going to hold her accountable, right? We, we do that for each other, you know, and we've always said that, Hey, if I'm ever falling out of line, you have got to be the person that tells me I trust you more than I trust anyone else. So, you know, I, I think that that's, you know, we're best friends. Yeah. Know, yeah. But another way to put it. Right. Yeah. I love it. Love that accountability. That's awesome. And uh, what would you say you've got going on in, in life, whether that's family, whether that's coaching, teaching, et cetera, that you're excited for that's on the horizon? <laughs> well, I um, just recently accepted a new job. Um, I've been in Shaw Mission for 18 years and I just accepted a a job in Gardner. Um, and I'm really, really excited about that. I'm, I'm going to greatly miss this place and these people that I've been around for so long. Um, but I, I really think it's a good opportunity for me and for my family. Um, I think I'm going to have a, a little bit more family time. I'm going to be a little bit closer to home. Um, I, I'm excited. I've got yeah. three more a little bit more than three weeks here in Shawnee Mission, and I'm going to cherish every moment of it. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to some new challenges, and and that makes the opportunity to maybe you know be a little closer to home and closer to my kids and family. Is you can't pass that up. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'm excited for you as well. It'll be fun to see how that comes along, and I'm sure it's going to be excellent. So. Very exciting. What would you say over the years in the many leadership hats that you've worn is maybe a mistake you've made that you've been able to learn from? I don't, I don't know if we have enough time. <laughs> you know, uh, I think there's been some times where I worried too much about what, I don't know if there's a specific event that I can turn back to, but there have been times where I've worried too much about outside perception and not just trusting in who I am and what I believe in and knowing that, that who I am and what I am is good and it's right. You know, I've, I've wanted to impress people or, you know, try to meet societal standards to things instead of sticking to my own, you know, laurels and, um, morals, values, beliefs, whatever it, it, you want to call it, but, um, you know, following what I truly believe. And, and I, I think sometimes when I've bought into something else that maybe wasn't me, I didn't follow through with it nearly as well as I would have for the simple fact that I didn't believe in it or I, I didn't trust in it like I should 
myself. Yeah. Uh, so trust yourself, right? right. Um, trust your experiences, rely on, you know, other people that you trust to help you make those decisions. That's probably another thing I've tried sometimes to do things. Uh, these almost sound contradictory, but I've almost tried to, to do things too much by myself instead of, you know, trusting in other people. Yeah. You know, and I, those kind of sound contradictory, but they're really not. Um, yeah. It's so personal when you're relating to your experiences with other people, you know, and asking for advice and getting guidance from them and not just, you know, what society sees as good. Right. Yeah. 100%. It's crazy how off track we can get when we try to do that, when we try to act in accordance with what others say is best or what appears to be best, but it hasn't even been tried and tested and we don't necessarily believe it ourselves. But often we do that sort of thing as human beings. <laughs> yeah. uh, I love resources. Uh, I love to hear, uh, are there any resources that have been beneficial for you, whether that's coaching, life, et cetera? You know, probably one of the things that's had a, the biggest impact on me and my life is, is through our church. Um, we have small groups or covenant groups um, with people that are like us. Um, you know, it, it's had a huge impact on me really since I joined the church, which was, you know, six months before my wife and I got married. So 16 years ago, um, we've had great people in our groups that have been connected with us and help keep me grounded. And, uh, you know, it, it's good to have people that are like-minded with you to help guide you and people that you trust to help make good decisions in your life. And it's been super impactful. Um, and I've been in a life group, been, it's been a huge benefit. I've had other people that are coaches in my group so we could share a lot of things. Um, and I've been a part of groups, you know, FCA, and um, there's a group called Community for Coaches, yeah. uh, where I, we've done similar things that have really, it's a, it's a time to kind of, I don't know, sort your feelings out and figure things out and learn a lot about yourself. And yeah, Community for Coaches is great for me establishing my purpose. What, what really am, am I doing here? Right. Find those find those places where you can go and you can figure those things out. Yeah. Figure out your purpose and mm. figure out how to handle situations and um, people that are going to, you know, back the same feelings that, that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Well, I've got one more serious question before you, before we finish off with a few rapid fire favorite questions. And so sure. this serious one is a little bit out of left field. Uh, but is there any sort of message or mantra that you kind of stand upon that you think, man, other people need to be reminded of this? And I'm sure we may be aware of it, but it's always good to be reminded of a good word. What sticks out to you? What comes to mind when I ask that? Um, you know, I think the one thing that I've always based myself, you know, help keep me centered is be a good person right? And, and care, care about other people. Yeah. I, I think there's nothing more important than, you know, love your, love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, that's always come back to help me. Um, and, it, and it brings me a great sense of satisfaction. Um, and I'm sure it does other people as well. Um, but be good to people, yeah. right? Take, take care of other people. It's so important. I don't know if the, I know there's some statement out there right now that's like the be a good person thing. And I, I don't, I'm not sure everything that's behind that, but those words I think can hold true. You know, yeah. whatever the movement is behind it, I don't know it well enough to know if I firmly believe in everything that they're saying, but the, that statement yeah, yeah. True. I love it and I can see the heart behind it and I truly agree with you there uh I don't know if you've heard of the book uh Love Does by Bob Goff ever heard of it uh -uh. 
So I recently read it. It was really good, really good. And, you know, I was kind of just thinking like, okay, I'm young, married, potentially going to have a family someday. As I think through like what I'm building, what do I want the McClanahan's to be about? I'm like, I want the McClanahan's to be doers. And it's not doers for the sheer fact of getting things done. It's doers because love does. And like you said, love your neighbor. And we can't love our neighbor fully or completely without first loving God. So like you said, that stems from loving God, love your neighbor, and you're going to do good and care for others. And you're going to be impactful in others' lives and vice versa. You're probably going to be fully impacted by others as well. So I see what you're saying there. And I'm glad you brought that up. Really good stuff. So like I said, just quickly, some of your favorites, more of a rapid fire type uh, style of questions. Do you have a favorite professional athlete? Oh, boy. You know, I don't know if I really do. Um, I Maybe the person that I check in on most and see how they're doing is Devontae Graham that plays yeah. for you. Um, basketball player I, I've always been a Kansas basketball fan and I, I loved you know throughout all the years of watching KU basketball since I was a little kid I think he and Frank Mason are my two favorite especially Devontae Graham I just love the way he plays and yeah there's something about him that makes me want to cheer for him yeah 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 I agree with you he's a few years into what looks like is going to be a very budding thriving career so he's a good player to check in on so you can you can shoot you can make it these days right? <laughs> yep and how about on the coaching side of things is there a professional coach that you like to keep tabs on oh boy professional coach um you know I don't know I'm not yeah uh, I, there really isn't. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't follow professional prof, professional sports too closely to begin with. I just kind of watch the local teams and cheer for local teams. Um, oh, yeah. I'm trying to think, is there a college coach or you know a big name coach that I'm that I follow quite a bit? I don't know. I, I kind of like Davo Sweeney at Clemson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's he's outspoken, probably a little more outspoken than than I am. But uh, I feel like I could go play for him, and <laughs> and I think I'd love that. That he's you know kind of a go getter and has fun, yeah. but he's serious and right. You know, I I feel like I could go play for Dabo. Yeah, he seems like he's got the complete package over there. I do want to play for him as well. So. <laughs> and then to think that ten years ago, nobody knew who he was. I remember when they hired him, and I was yeah. like, "Ooh, yeah, good for yeah. him." immediate immediate yeah. turnaround yeah. he's, got, he's got god flowing through him i can tell <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely a couple more for you uh do you have a favorite refreshing beverage oh boy code red mountain dew is <laughs> it, it is it's not one that i want to be my favorite refreshing beverage it's a little high in calories and caffeine but uh that's my go-to. Yeah. Is that a quick trip stop a couple, a few times a week? Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm not a, I don't go to quick trip. I used to go a couple times a day, <laughs> but uh, I've kind of curbed my quick trip and there we I, go. I've tried to not delve into it too much, but oh, uh, yeah. when it's hot outside or when I'm coaching my daughter in a softball tournament, I, that I've got to have a, Nice. Yeah. And then how about favorite meal or restaurant? Oh, boy. You know, uh, my favorite steak is uh, I like steak. Um, what is this? It's at uh, Longhorn. It's called the Outlaw Ribeye at Longhorn. Oh, boy. That, not. And then my favorite restaurant, though, is Kyoto. It's a hibachi sure. grill. Okay. In Overland Park, and it yep. is, it's excellent. Oh, nice. Good suggestions. Gonna check those out. Uh, last one for you. Favorite TV show or movie? Oh, <laughs> you get a kick out of this, but uh, <laughs> my, my favorite movie of all time is Revenge of the Nerds. Oh. If you, you might be too young to have ever seen it, but it was in full effect in my youth, but I'm, I'm, 
I'm an underdog fan all the time. And, you know, when those Lambda Lambda Lambdas beat the Alpha Betas, it just made my heart sing. <laughs> there are some parts of that movie that I'm not proud of to call it my favorite movie, but uh, the underdog story and the, the amount of laughs I've gotten from that movie have, are hard to beat. Nice. Love it. Yeah, I've seen bits and pieces of it, so I need to watch the full thing. But Get the PG version. <laughs> Hilarious. Well, that's all I've got for you. I appreciate you taking the time. A lot of fun to sit and talk. Yeah, hey, I appreciate it. It's always good to to hear your voice, to get messages from you because it helps keep you grounded, helps keep me focused and in line. And, you know, the more of those contacts that you can have, the the easier it is to oh, yeah. stay, on, stay on those tracks and to be the person that I want to be. So Let's go. Well, thank you. And thanks for all you do. Likewise, man. Appreciate you.